Hi, this is John Twist of University Motors. Today I want to talk about emission controls. I was just at the um, MGB meet in Philadelphia, Valley Forge, MG 2008. It was a great time. They had almost 400 MGs on the field, MGBs. It was a really cool show. And I had worked on a lot of cars. But since that time, I took a lot of calls. This is only Tuesday. And uh, since this weekend, I've taken a bunch of calls about emission controls. And I want to show a little earlier model. We've already got one video up on YouTube about emission controls on the later cars, but this is the emission controls on the earlier cars. So let's take a look. This is a 69 MGB GT, but I want to point out the emission control, the evaporative loss control system on this car, which remains like this until uh, about 1972 or 73 when they pick up the anti-run-on valve. First of all, we've got a big tube here that runs from the bottom of the charcoal canister and down to the ground called a dump tube, called a vent tube, call it what you like but air comes through this tube off the ground and up into the bottom of the charcoal canister it goes through the charcoal and the charcoal canister comes out of the top of the charcoal canister runs along the tube and goes into the into the uh, valve cover now this is about looks about a half an inch in diameter um, but the hole in the end of this tube isn't half an inch. It's 7 64ths. It's just a little tiny hole. So if you're fitting an aluminum valve cover, you want to make sure that when you put your quarter inch pipe nipple in there, you put a washer on top and reduce that hole uh, to 7 64ths. Then, after it goes through the engine, through the valve cover, down to the side covers, around the sump and so forth, it comes out here it comes out of the front tappet inspection cover and is drafted into the front of the front carburetor and into the rear of the rear carburetor. So the, the motion of the air again is, is from uh, down by the starter through the charcoal canister that purges the charcoal, sucks the air into the engine, out of the engine, and burns it up in the normal combustion process. Now the charcoal canister over here on the right hand side of the car is connected to the fuel tank here and it's connected to the carburetor float bowls here. You'll watch as uh, we go across this line, across the back, and we're hooked to the, uh, to, the, to the float bowl vents here. Let me explain what happens again at the charcoal canister. When we fill up the tank um, and uh, with cold gasoline and park on the hot asphalt, the gasoline expands, the air fuel on top of the gasoline wants to expand, where does it go? It can't go out in the atmosphere. The government doesn't want unburned hydrocarbons in the atmosphere. So all the venting, all the air going into the tank to replace the gasoline used comes out of here, goes into the tank, all the air fuel that, that is expanded comes up into here, is adsorbed by the charcoal, and then is purged and cleaned during the normal operation of the car. Additionally, this line which goes over to the, to the um, float bowls, when you turn the car off and the underbonnet temperature rises to 230 degrees or more, the gasoline in the float bowls can actually boil. That air fuel mixture cannot make its escape into the atmosphere. Here it's trapped and is sent back into the charcoal canister where when the engine's running, the air flow goes through the canister, burns up all those fumes. Some people elect to take this canister off. That's wrong. But if you do take this canister off, you have to leave this open or the gas tank will implode. And when it vents, you're going to get gasoline fumes wafting up into the cockpit through here. Additionally, this line that comes over here to the, to the float bowls, if you take these lines off and plug them, the car will never, ever run right. And if you take this line and simply connect it to the back line and provide no inlet for fresh air, the car will also run very poorly. I just took a call like that today. So it's important to have this charcoal canister in place. If you think the charcoal has gotten too crummy to use on the inside, you can go to the fish store and buy some fish charcoal and replace it. It's got open cell foam at the bottom, maybe open cell foam at the top so it can breathe. It just spins apart. Take it apart, it unscrews at the bottom. Very easy to take apart and clean. All this stuff is important to make your car run well. In 1973 and 1974, they had an anti-run-on valve. We'll show that on a later video. 
Kel and I are going to be in Honolulu in, uh, on July 26th, that weekend. So if you're from uh, Hawaii, pay attention to your local British Car Club. We're going to be out there hopefully fix some other cars than just the one we're going out to fix. Then uh, in September, the weekend after Labor Day, we're going to be in Altoona, PA. And on the 24th of October, we're going to be in Waco, Texas at the GOF Texas. Anyway, it's always a pleasure. Nice to see everybody this past weekend at MG 2008. And we'll look forward to helping you sort out the problems of your car. Thanks.